What up, douche? Flaptron 2024 in the his house. I know who this is. The plot. Now you are you. What model of Plaptron are you up to now? Well, that's the thing. I I like changing the model number of the Plaptron every time I call in. So it's it's up to 2024. You always want to be a year ahead. You 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 do always want to be a year ahead on the model of robot that you're claiming that you. This is Darren, who I work with over at Consolidated Cardboard. Although I don't see you that much because you're you know you're handling the West Coast account. Yes, we so we, lucky and. We don't overlap in face as much as we used face to face as much no. as we used to. Yeah. No. Yeah. But man, look at you talking to big TV stars, Patricia Arquette. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's pretty I, exciting. I listen to it and you are really good at interviewing. It's so weird because it's a real it's a real far cry from when uh, you got all tongue tied when we met DeForest Kelly at the Newbridge Planetarium in 1982. I, I didn't think you were gonna, gonna get one word out. Yeah, that hi, was- hi, a, hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Okay, okay. Look, maybe not my most confident moment. Right. But it's DeForest Kelly, it's a big deal. It, well, yeah, it was, I mean, we both, he was our favorite guy. He was our favorite on, on that uh, crew. He really was, and I just, I. It's like you get ready for it and you get ready for it. And then all of a sudden he's there in front of you and you're just like, that's effing DeForest Kelly right in front of me. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it should be known. We were the original Bones Brigade. That was our fan club for him. Yes. Yeah, he, was, he was Bones. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. I, well, yeah. Do I and remember? The, skateboard, the skateboarders took our name. Yeah. He did not seem as impressed by us, though. He seemed really annoyed by me, especially, which really hurt. It was a strange one. He was. What? Yeah. He just was I like. That homemade t-shirt that I, that I made. Yeah. He like. He didn't. He didn't. You know, there's those things where you think it's like, well, this will get him on our side. And every time yeah. we dropped one of those, it got him more not on our side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The drawing on the T-shirt, it was supposed to be him, but I guess it looked like a wiener or something. I didn't mean it to, but he got really offended by it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did not. He was he was mad. You'd think that the that it was like on the show. You'd think that there was like a problem on the on the Enterprise the way he was acting. Right. Yeah, or on the set. I heard he was a real pill. Yeah, that well, we got we got a good taste of it. We did, we did. Um, hey, so am I correct that the topic is summer vacations that, that kind of went awry? Is that what it is? It's like we're talking all about summer stuff. We're talking about summer past summer vacations, summer plans you might have. Just summer. It's like, but a lot of it is oh. is is bad summer, uh, summer bummer vacations. Sure. All right. Well, strap yourself in because I got a big bummer. All right. Okay. I never told you this, but uh, Deirdre almost left me during last year's summer vacation at, at um, Beach Bridge. Really? Yeah. Yeah. What um, happened? What happened? Well, well, things things were okay at first, but you know, we go and we uh, go to the beach and we get in, in our beach chairs and we're listening to our murder podcast and this absolute smoke show comes walking up the beach and I guess I thought Deirdre and I were close enough and mature enough to joke about things but uh, tur <laughs> turns out we weren't oh my god um so well I I, I say to Deirdre damn he makes me want to show up early for my shift as a teller at Al Banco del Spanco. Oh, God. Man. Oh. I know. But, like, I thought it was funny because it's like I work at this Spanish bank. 
And, you know, there's obviously the, the other connotation, but, oh, my God, she did not like that. Yeah, well, when you say El Banco de Spanko, you, you, you're not giving... Del Spanko. What's that? Uh, Del Spanko. Del Spanko. El, El Banco yeah. Del Spanko? That's it. Oh, you've heard of it. You banked it? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm repeating what you're, <laughs> okay. Darren. I'm. Oh, okay. I'm just oh, saying I you're not. Know. There's not a lot of. There's not a lot of wiggle room on that one. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Which is also what he said. <laughs> um, so oh, yeah, she didn't like that. So um, to get out of that conundrum, I, I knew I had to say something extremely deep and complimentary about her. Mm-hmm. So I said. Honey, I think it's a testament to how deeply I love you as a person that if I didn't know you at all and I saw you walking down the beach, I'd probably go, eh. Well, oh, da- Darren, wow. No, but but see, then she got mad and, and I told her, I, no, I don't. It means I don't care that you're not super hot. And that made it worse, Tom. Yeah, this is bad. It was real bad. And then she was so mad I had to sleep for the next four nights in an inflatable raft in the driveway. Why why in the driveway? I guess she wanted the neighbors to know that I was in the, in the, in the, not the dog house, but the, the raft house, I guess. Yeah. So, well, I guess they, they must've known, huh? Yeah, and speaking of dogs, every neighborhood beach dog came to that raft well after midnight to pee in it while I was sleeping. And and some just came to fart in it. I hope I can say that on the air. Well, you just did. So they, they, yeah, they didn't, they, that's what the dogs did, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's like they knew I was, I was a bad egg. I don't know. Darren. But, um. I know, I know, but you know, all is all, all is turning bright with the news I'm about to lay on your ass. Are you ready? Uh, yeah, I am. Well, first, let me say I know we both have prayed this day would come, and it finally has. Okay, I'm not sure if we. Uh, I I want to see where this goes. They're finally releasing. The New Jersey's Got It Volume 2 compilation, our hardcore band, Ambivalent Psychosis appeared on, and it's time to get back together. Well, Darren. Isn't that the greatest? Uh, You can't find the words. I knew you'd be excited, but I didn't know you'd be that excited. Hmm. Wow! Uh, well, this is how you were with the Forest Kelly? I am. It's all. A, it feels the same. I now feel like the Forest Kelly felt looking and hearing you. What? Uh, the, no, this man. Uh, people. Okay, what? for the audience, Buy our records is, is back in business. Buy our records is back. So for people in what are, what are we talking again, Darren? Eighty five, eighty six. Is that about where we are? We we, we formed in late eighty four, and and we kind of uh, you know we got our chops up, we got our band together, uh, and unfortunately we played only one show in, in late eighty five. Yeah, yeah, and our our band was ambivalent psychosis. Oh boy. We were great. Come, we just didn't have a chance, Tom. And I'll tell you, many people are saying our song "Officer Harrop Sucks" is the best thing on the comp. So it's, uh, it's coming out. Coming out, yeah. And I gotta say, man, I listened to "Officer Harrop Sucks" today for the first time in a while, and man, it's got everything. Like all the best hardcore songs starts with a barely discernible super fast bass intro played on a Rickenbacker so it's super thin sounding. Oh my god, it's like butter in my ears. Can't get enough of it. Want to eat it. Just yeah, that's uh it's a very specific uh sound. 
so great. Hey, you know what's weird? What's that, Darren? It's kind of weird that Officer Harris is still on the force after all these years, but still only a regular officer. He never made it to a higher rank. Never got promoted. No, no. And I have to ask this. Uh huh. Is he dumb? Is he dumb? Is Officer Harrib's dumb? Wow, I never thought of yeah. it in those uh, on those terms. Yeah, well, here's he might. Why I bring this up. He uh, might. Go ahead. I want to hear your. I I once saw him on his break in his cruiser, and he was reading an Archie comic. It was like his break, and while he was reading, he was moving his mouth like he was reading it out loud to himself. Sure. And then like. Six, six seconds later, after he after he would stop reading out loud, he would. It was obvious he was thinking about what he just read, and then he would laugh. For an Archie comic, how long was it yeah. taking him? Do you, could you track how long it was taking him to read, like a page? Yeah. It, uh, well, I I I watched him for probably like a good ten minutes, and I think it was just one page. Wow. Yeah, you know, Darren, At, I think he's dumb. You know what page it was, Tom? What page? You know what page it was? Cover. It was the cover. Yeah. So it was, it was a good 15 minutes on the cover of an Archie the comic. Cover. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think it had any words on it other than Archie. So it... Yeah, he might not be um like 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 Smash Mouth said, he might not be the sharpest tool in the shed. No, true. True. Hey, speaking of words, quite the quite the opposite, someone who's great with words. Yeah. You you were such a good lyricist. I really think you could have been the next Jello B. Arthur. The what? Uh, Jello B. Arthur from the Dead Kennedys. Good Lord. Jello. I've really lost touch. J- it's not. <laughs> it's not. His name is not Jello B. Arthur. What is it? Jello Biafra. Get ready to suck those words. Dead Kennedy. You searching it? Well, I, yeah. Well, I, I don't want to talk about this anymore. So, yeah, um, of course you do. Okay. Uh, what? So okay, so you you liked my lyrics back then? Oh my god, we all did, and nobody in in our scene nailed mid eighties pathos in song like you did, and, and I, I'm just looking at. at this old cassette I have of, of of a practice I recorded on our boombox. God, you, you were good. We aren't the world. Too many posers. New Coke sucks. Back to the Future blows. There was that song you wrote about Live Aid called Live Ain't. Um, millions of dead cabbage patch kids. Here's one that I think you. Here's the one you're a little off the mark. Um, it was called Mark My Words, Michael Jordan is a Flash in the Pan. And I didn't get that one right. No, I, I missed the missed the mark on that one. No. You made up for it, though, with George Bush is the Unabomber, uh, the McRib rules. We built this city on hardcore punk. Lamb sucks. Nancy Reagan's crack pipe. And um song, you know, we used to... We only played one show, but it was our big closer. They found the Titanic in Officer Harrop's ass. You really had an H on for him. I really did back then. He was not my yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Not my no, guy. No, he was always, always like, he was always get up, getting me on you for that skateboard. You would, you would always ride away. Oh, he hated my skateboard. Didn't, didn't like it. Didn't no. Like it. Sometimes so, I, know, I, I would see him, I would see him walking around. And he would be at like a right. six or a seven in terms of how mad he would be at me. 
But if I was even holding my skateboard, look at 10. Yeah. I think he thought you were going to use it as a weapon. Just slapping people in the head or something. Uh-huh. No, I, I mean, yeah, he hated it. Hey, well, speaking of hitting people in the head, I'll never forget when that bully Hammerhead wanted you to write lyrics for his band, Hate From Within. Yeah. Oh, my God. Bad news. He was so scared of him. He was bad. He looked like if the 40-year-old shop student who called Arnie Cunningham in the film Christine was also in The Exploited. Remember? It's like it was it's there like it was yesterday. It's really like it was yesterday. Yeah. 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 But you know the the the, the combination of you writing for them it was never going to work because your your goal was to write about the woes of living in the Reagan era and Hammerhead wanted to sing about beating up guys in block of seagull shirts. Yeah. Yeah. You uh, had one, didn't you? Didn't you have one? A flock of seagull shirt? I did. Yeah. I did. I was in. I my tastes were pretty, pretty all over, pretty diverse and all over the place. They were. They were. They I were. Yeah. I was yeah. just not. Um, just I was just not a oh, like exclusively one thing or another thing. I kind of was interested in in a variety of things. So yeah. I think that's great. I, I think that serves you well as, as as you get older in life. If you're just stuck in this box, it doesn't really doesn't benefit you. But uh, hey, getting getting back to Flock of Seagulls, who was the guy you were obsessed with? Um, he was the bassist. I forget his name. Oh, Frank um, Maudsley. You wrote him. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God! I can't believe you didn't respond to all those letters you wrote him. Never, never got one reply. I I must have written. 15. Yeah. You know, some of those huge stars get jaded. I've heard very similar things about guys like, um, you know, Dave Grohl and Kurt, Kurt Vile, especially. You've heard he's jaded. Oh yeah. 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 I, I, it would be a real bummer. Actually, I, I did. I haven't heard about Grohl. I've only heard about Kurt. I gotta say. Oh, you didn't hear Grohl is a okay. Um, no, well, that's not my experience with Kurt at all, and I I, I know him pretty well. Oh, um, oh good. Yeah, okay. but um, it's a real okay. bummer to think back that Frank Maudsley from a flock of seagulls would have been would have been on some sort of star trip. I know, I know. Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, who, who knows? It was a different time back then. But uh, speaking of that time, I, I really thought you were going to be the Robert Hunter of hardcore, you know, quietly writing songs for DRI, GBH, and the Dagal Abortions, bands like that. You thought I was going to be the Robert Hunter, the Grateful Dead's yeah. lyricist. Well, I, that's that's uh, that's a that's the new one on me, Darren. Well, I know. It, I, I guess I just thought it, it could happen. Um, but man, I gotta say, I wish we, I just wish we had not folded so early and only played that one show because you, you had such cool stage presence, and nobody was doing that Roger Daltrey mic twirl in hardcore. Yeah, and that's the thing that I was really trying to bring different. I was not just going to be a pure hardcore uh, uh, front man. And uh, that's what would have set us apart, you know, if, if, um, you know, if the incident hadn't happened. And, you know, we, of course, we learned that the reason there was all that duct tape on Roger Daltrey's microphone was that so when he swung it, the mic wouldn't detach from, from the cable and hit someone in the face, which is, of course, what, what happened that night. One show we played. Oh, I know, I know. It was bad. That was bad. I honestly didn't think it. I didn't think a human could believe that much, and I, I still think of I have nightmares about this when people were running and sliding in the blood puddles like those kids with the mud at Woodstock. Yeah, I I think at a point people were surprised that it was blood. 
because they were so right. much of it that they assumed it was something else. Like it couldn't yeah. be blood because how EMT, could there be that much blood there? Right. Yeah. How, yeah. And the EMT people were, were flipping in it. I'll tell you, man, it, it was like if Trent L. Strauss promoted a show at Chris Williamson's Rock Hotel. <laughs> really? I, that's I've never heard it put so succinctly as that. Isn't it weird that none of the Cro-Mags ever held Chris Williamson down and shaved off that mustache? <laughs> You know, I never thought of that, Darren. Mustaches have had a weird place in music. Right? Yeah. Tracy Pugh. I mean, he, he could pull it off. I always think of like, I know this is not hardcore, of course, but Night Ranger had that keyboard player who seemed like he was 20 years older than the rest of the guys in the band. Wore a hat, obviously bald. Yeah, he wore like a beret and had a beard. A beard and yeah. mustache. Tough look back then. Tough look. Who had the be who had the best punk mustache? S Strangler's gotta be up there, right? Oh, I yeah, Jeff Black had a had a good facial hair. Uh uh Dave Dave Greenfield had had the mustache. But it's interesting. I didn't realize until very recently. I saw a photo uh, montage of Dave Greenfield from the start of the Stranglers until his death. Mustache. Only in the picture for a few years. Really? And yet, and, and yet that's all we think of when we think, when we think of him. Yeah. That mustache. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. Get, getting back to that show, we we were so lucky we never got sued. Oh my god! Yeah, that was uh, a real talk about dodging a bullet or well, a microphone. Th thank your dad for that. Your your dad stepped up and offered that kid free hamburgers for life at at the Burger King he managed. So that saved the day. It did. That my dad. Yeah. He, 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 I don't even know how many hamburgers he doled out to keep, to keep that kid happy. Well, he, he took one for the team and man, I have such fond memories of hanging out at your house and your dad would come home and he'd bring those week old croissants with him. Oh, they were so good. They were better hard than when they were fresh. I preferred them fresh, but I did, did, I definitely ate my fair share of the week olds, as we call them. Yeah, I've heard you've ate, I've heard you've eaten your fair share of the hard ones. Oh man, I'll never get set up like that again. I hope somebody was recording that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they were. Oh, good. Yes. <laughs> you did oh, it. Oh my god. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, did you. It. oh so good so thank you namaste so there's going to be a record release show at los amigos in july and i want to play it please oh, wait wait you want you want to put our band back together that we played yes darren we played once and people wanted more i they, i know they did and a bunch of the old bands are getting back together as well. Come on, please. Like a lot of the good bands, flagrant apathy, violation of humanity is getting back. Society's sewer, stench of misery, violent decay, nuclear insanity, last minute annihilation, murder of innocence. Some bad news. The dead Harrapses are getting back. The, the dead Harrapses are, they're doing it again. Yeah, I was super hoping they wouldn't reform so we'd be the only anti harrods band on the bill, but their bassist Todd manages Los Amigos. So that's a, just a done deal. That's like a it's like a back room uh some back room dealings there. Yeah. It's all who you know still to this day. Yeah, it really is. It really is who you know, huh? You know what's worse? You know you know what's worse? Those guys sucked. 
And the seven inch they put out sounded like an even weaker Pillsbury hardcore, if you ask me. So I don't think they have any right being on the bill. So, well, uh, they were a part of the scene too. I know. I know. So here's a weird one, but I think it's going to be a cool spectacle. The dudes in Adrenaline OD, you know, the, the biggest band in, Jer- in Jersey. Sure. They're all feud. They're all feuding. So, they refuse to play together, but their individual bands will play. Wait, so what is that going to be like? Uh, well, there's four of them. So it's, uh, it, let me see here. The list. Ruth Wingate's Adrenaline OD. Um, Adrenaline OD featuring Paul Richard. Jack Steeple's tribute to AOD. And Dave Scott presents the story of Adrenaline, Adrenaline OD, which apparently is a two-hour play without music. That's interesting. That's so, so there's going to be four AOD, four AODs basically. Yes. Yeah. And and then the other eight bands. So people are going to hear some of those songs multiple times. All of the songs multiple times. So they're going to hear rock and roll gas station four times. Yeah, Clean and Jerk, uh, Trans Am, mm-hmm. Suburbia, all the all the big ones. I like, yeah. AOD versus Godzilla. Yes, absolutely. You go deep. I didn't think you went that deep. That's really great. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, learn something new every day, there, Darren. Yeah. So I I, I uh, messaged Timmy and Bobby from the old band. And they said they can probably convince their wives to let them do the show and maybe practice a few times over Zoom. So it's kind of happening. I don't want that. That's less promising than it initially sounded. Well, that's neither here nor there, but I I definitely want to change my stage name. What do you want to change your stage name to? Well, I think in 2023... Duranarchy sounds a little bit cheesy, maybe. I w- I would think so. I think you could you could do better. Yeah. Well, I I I work out a lot now, so I, I you know I'm I'm getting pretty good, and I think for how how cut I'm getting, I think the name Rip Samson is kind of fitting. So I'm going to go with that. Rip Samson. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, I don't know about that. That doesn't sound cool. I think it's cool. I d- I don't oh, think that's. No, I, 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 I don't think what? that's pretty. I think I that's ha- corny. No, oh, I'm gonna wear a half shirt, so my abs are really uh, pop. Uh huh. What, what are you? Like the sleeves are long. It's, what, it's a cool look. Yeah. What, what are you? The ba- the saxophone player for Tina Turner? Oh God. I loved that guy. You were into him, so I didn't say how much I was into that aspect of the Tina Turner band, but yeah, he was yeah. cool. He was cool. He was cool in the Lost Boys also. Loved it, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man, remember the great lines on that movie? It's probably the top 10 lines of all time. What is it? When they're eating the the, the Chinese takeout, and I, I think it's um, Keeper Sutherland says, how do you like your maggots? No, how do you like your worms? And then the um, the new kid looks down and, and it's worms in his um his, his takeout box. Yeah. And, and then he scary. looked. It should have been maggots. Now, now I think about it. Yeah. Well, maybe you can get in touch with Kiefer Sutherland or something. See if they'll he'll r- r- do some uh, loop lines for it and change it to maggots. Maybe. Do you have his info? I I, I was joking, Darren. He's not going to do that. Ah. Uh. Crap. All right. All right. Well, look, let's let's change the topic. All right. I saw a really cool band the other night at Los Amigos. Uh huh. Who did you see? Well, a heavy metal National Lampoon's vacation themed band. I've never seen anything like it. It was really cool. I've never heard of uh, a metal a metal band that was using National Lampoon's vacation as their as their their theme for their 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 whatever yeah. you want to call it their their reason for existing yeah they're called metallic p p e a okay remember that not really 
Um, metallic P is the color of the Wagon Queen family truckster that Eugene Levy uh, sells Chevy Chase. That's right. Instead of the car That's he right. wanted. Yeah. Oh. Meta- so so the, they were named after the the car color in, yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So they, they were this, this weird cross between the OCs and level 42. Really? Yeah. That's a pretty interesting. Was the was the guy playing bass holding it really high up? Like yeah, he was the lead singer and he held the bass he held the bass so high it obscured his face. Really? Oh that's yeah. that's yeah. a that's a that's that's a unique. Yeah, it was pre- it was pretty wild. Um hey, speaking of that, last week a very enchanting young man called in and but though you barely let him speak a word he said something that intrigued me he he said that one of the animals in your little psycho chat cult said a caller seemed quote like he plays pretty high up the neck unquote is, is that a real insult because i've never heard it before well first of all i don't know what you're talking about that i barely let that caller get a word in edgewise well it's something you do oh it's that guy talked a lot um I don't know. I don't know about that, Darren. Okay, fair fair enough. So getting back to Metallic P, they had a bunch of catchy songs, and some of which I still remember the titles of. Can you recall any? You can recall any of them? Well, it's only a couple I remember. Uh, God, let me think here. Um, There was um, Hey Underpants, uh, Good Talk Russ. I wonder if these guys know the Commodores. In thine heavenly area up there, uh, there was one called "I'm in," "I'm I'm in deep." Uh, "Don't touch" was another one that was really good. Uh, they had a ballad called "How Could I Like a Girl Like That? She's Ugly." Um, "Real Tomato Ketchup Eddie" was a, was a good song. Um, there was one called "I'm Proficient in Many Strokes," and I dive. Um, there's a real raging song called "I Think You're All F in the Head." And uh, that segued into into an even faster song called "We're Gonna Have So Much Effing Fun." You're going to be whistling zippy zippity doo out of your a holes. Um, there was a really cool power pop song called "We're Closed." The moose outside should have told you. Um, uh, There's one called "You Ever Bop Your Baloney." Uh, you're taking me to Phoenix. Um, a really droney song called "Yay Though the Hindu Speak of Karma." Um, but the best song, of course, was called. We like to send out a mailer. Sure. The, the, um, a, how, the singer. Go ahead. I don't um, want to hear about the, the singer. singer. Even ate, he, he ate watermelon while they played that song and his strings got really sticky, but he was cool. I, you said you could recall maybe a couple songs of theirs and you just named easily named 20 songs of theirs. Oh wow! I did. I, I don't know. I, was, I guess I was in a trance or something. I felt like I just said one of them. Mm-hmm. You said you said more than one. Oh, all right. Okay. Well, look, you're going to do the reunion, right? I'm not. Well, I already said we'd do it, and that you'd also MC it. Uh doubly not. You sound like you're you're PO'd. Are, are you? Um. Well, I I'm really not into this. I'm seriously not into this, Darren. Well, we can talk about it, and I don't want you to be mad at me. I'm I'm on your side. I you know it, when it's all said and done, I want people to know the good things about you, not what they keep writing on the industry gossip sites. Oh, I don't want to know about the. Well, wait. What are what are they writing? I, no, no, I don't, want to, I don't I want to. By our, I don't want to know. No, I, you know what? Okay. I do want to know. What are they? What is it? Okay. Uh, on Viarity.com the other day, I read that you punched out the great Joe Flaherty. What is wrong with you? That's not true at all. Joe Flaherty was a guest on the show what last happened? week. He was a guest on the show. We had a conversation. I did not. I was not. I did not physically meet him, let alone punch him out. Oh, the article said that first you you held his head down in a sink, which is so mean for someone that age. 
I didn't do that. Okay. Well, God, they got to get their, their facts, facts together then. They, if they said that, then yes, they do. Cause that did not happen. Oh no. What? Oh no. What? What is it? What? Well, I guess what they say about the best show being the favorite podcast of New Jersey's lamest hardcore band is true. Oh man. Why? What's going on? Tom, you got to get over here pronto. The drones and the dead Harrises are standing in my front lawn. They look like they're, they, they want to tussle. I just texted Timmy and Bobby to bring a couple baseball bats. Hang on. I'm hanging on. Hanging on. Stay. You posers are going to be choking on your own teeth in 10 minutes when all the ambivalent psychosis guys get here and we do a mosh pit on your dumb faces. That's aggressive. It's a stand. Oh, no. What? Oh, man. Tom, Timmy, and Bobby's wives won't let them leave the house tonight. It's, there's some kind of Vanderpump marathon going on or something. Well, Darren, I don't know what to tell you. This is bad. You shouldn't have shot Tom, your get mouth over off. Come on. Come on. It's just going to be you and me. Get your ass over. Please. I can't. I can't. I'm shutting the door. Oh, no, Tom. You know how, how in movies there's always a guy and he's holding something in one hand and pounding it into the other hand? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Um, well... The DH's drummer, Hammerhead Jr. Oh, man. He's, he's doing that, but with a huge lead pipe. And each time before he hits his hand with the pipe, he gets it really hot with a blowtorch. He's hitting his hand with a burning hot pipe, and he has no reaction. Oh, my God. Oh, Darren, this, this is bad, bad. I'm scared. Oh, my God. Oh man! Oh man! I hope the door holds. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock it really. I'm gonna bar it. I'm gonna put a piece of board across. Oh, no! Oh man! And Tesco V said Lyle Pressler was the G Gordon lady of hardcore. Oh man! Oh, you, you, you I, I don't know what to tell you. You're, you're alone on this one, buddy. Darren. We lost him. How about, oh man. No, Darren. I hope, I hope he's okay. Look, I don't want to do the reunion, but I do. I don't wish ill on my guy, Darren. Um, That's some scary stuff. That's some seriously scary stuff.